right, so. Six no minutes. fucking All right, look out. <laughs> Woo. All right, well, good morning. Uh, we're going to leave Tux, Santa Clarita. My name is Logan Alec. I am basically a personal finance blogger. So, my company name is Alec Media LLC, and its primary revenue generating property is a personal finance blog called Money Done Right. I started this website as a side hustle three years ago, so February 2017. And within a year, it grew enough revenue-wise that allowed me to quit my job and just become a full-time blogger. So I've been full-time with it for two years this month. So about this website, I typically get three or four major questions. So I'll tell you what they are and I'll go through them one by one. So the first question I usually get is, what do I do all day? The second question I get is, how do you actually make money? The third question I get is, how do you get readers on your website? And the fourth, the fourth question is, how passive is this? Is this actually super passive? Are you just like sitting on a beach all day, like a laptop guru, or do you actually have there? Is it not as passive as one might think? So uh, I'll address each of those and open the floor to more questions. So first question, what do I do all day? So as a website owner, I create content. Or actually my editorial team creates content. And the primary content, the number one form of content that we have on the site is reviews. So for example, it's tax season. We'll review the latest edition of a tax software, actually several tax softwares, and we'll say, hey, here's the pros, here's the cons. We'll have a zero to 10 scale for things. You know, it's an eight out of 10 for cost. It gets a seven out of 10 for usability, six out of 10 for customer support. And we have these kinds of reviews for all kinds of consumer-oriented financial products, tax software, credit cards, robo-advisors, uh, most verticals in consumer-oriented personal finance. Um, so that's what we do all day. Now, the, uh, the second question I typically get is, how do you actually make money? So, uh, if you've ever been to a website, which I'm sure all of you have, thousands of times in your life, you will uh, notice that there are sometimes ads on these websites all over the place. We used to, put, we used to have ads on our website, we don't anymore, because we thought we killed the user experience. So another way that some websites make money is they do sponsorships, which means a brand will come to them and say, hey, we'll pay you so much money, X amount of money, for you to write an article about us. I did that a couple times. Didn't really like it. Left a bad taste in my mouth because I felt it killed the objectivity that we're aiming for if you review these financial products. I have got a lot of feet, you know, back and forth with these brands. Hey, we're paying you for this article. Can you like rephrase this or do something like that? And my editor and I are like, no, we don't. We don't want to do that. So the only way that this website makes money right now is through affiliate marketing. So uh, I'm not going to call on you, but does anyone who's here familiar with affiliate marketing? Okay. So most people are, or at least half people have heard of it. So what this means is when someone clicks, reads my, let's say the tax software review, reads the review, and clicks from my website to that tax software products website and makes a purchase, I get a commission. And then the follow-up question to that is typically, well, don't you just promote the companies that pay you the most money, <laughs> uh, the highest you know, affiliate commission? And the answer to that is no, but I used to. So when I first started this site, I just wanted to monetize it uh, any way I could. My articles would generally consist of promoting the, the companies that would pay me the most for a, for a sale or an email option or something like this. But over time, that I, I felt bad about that. You know, I'm, supposed to, I'm presenting myself as this financial resource for people, um, and I'm not doing them a service by just basically being a shill for these companies, right? So over the past couple of years, we have revamped almost all the content on the site to make it just more objective. If we say these are the best tax software, let's say, you know, and three of them pay us and one of them don't, that's not going to affect how we rate them. So we're going to rate them objectively. Even though we don't make money on that one, you know, but we just want to do our readers a service. And we find that um, this helps us rate higher Google as well. So Google, if you're familiar with like SEO, their goal, well, they want to make money from their ads, which they're increasingly hiding more in their content with organic listings. But from an organic perspective, they want to give people to search results the best answers in the world. And if your web page or your article is just completely salesy, people are gonna people are pretty savvy. They're gonna be on the internet every year. And they're gonna know, hey, this, this isn't a quality website, they're gonna go back to some other search results. So um, it's in our best interest in the long run and the reader's best interest to create objective content. Um, next question is how do I get eyeballs on the website? And 
this is a great question. So at, at first, it was all from organic social media, believe it or not, particularly Pinterest, which I never used before. I heard people were using Pinterest to uh, get websites to, to blogs. Um, if you don't know how to use Pinterest, that's okay. I didn't either. You basically create a pretty picture and click on the picture and it takes you. But over time, about a year into it, by the time we went full time, Google, just people searching on Google for things, had eclipsed the, the Pinterest and other social media traffic. I also did some paid social media, Facebook ads, and things like that. That was great for a time. You know, if I could spend X on Facebook ads today, I and mean, from affiliate revenue, get a return of 1.5X or something, you know, I'd do that all day. But Facebook ads have gotten, and other forms of advertising have gotten more um, expensive as time has gone on. So now we rely most of that organic traffic. Uh, as our traffic source. And the final last question is, is how passive is this really? And um, that's kind of a tough question because it's true that, you know, I could take the week off or the afternoon off and the website will still generate income. Um, but the, uh, the downside to that is if I take too much time off and my competitors are out there creating awesome content and leading their teams to create awesome content, I'm gonna fall behind. So uh, in the short term, yes, it's, it's pretty passive. You know, I go on vacation, I come back and you know I pay thousands of dollars. But um, you know, in the long run, I got to be on top of my game and uh, you know not let things fall by the wayside. Right on! Wow! Well done! I just now got a Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. The heart bell. And, and your and your I'm belt on. buckle got the heart on it. Why, Lord? I I love, love Martha. She's always like oh, kind of dressing. It's because I ran Except for Hanukkah. She missed out on that one, didn't she? I know, I'm so mad. Still, I'm mad. Yeah. I'm so mad. This year. Oh, yeah, this year. Yeah. This year. All right, so you know how the drill goes, right? Now it's up to us to hammer Logan with questions. I know, right? I knew Samantha would. As soon as Logan says, yeah, something about. Finance, finance, yeah. Yes. I, I saw I saw the little hair on the back of Smith and Smith. <laughs> <laughs> right? She's like, oh, I got a thousand questions. All right, so we've got 20 minutes on the clock, and when you have a question, we have a microphone. Because, man, I'll tell you what, at the end of the day, when yeah. Warren comes out with this fantastic video, our questions are so clear. Yeah. You don't have to go, what they say? So, all right, so we'll pass this around. So apparently the first question goes to Samantha, the first question goes to Kyle. Here we go, 20 minutes. Hi, my name is Samantha. Thank you so much for coming in and chatting with us. When I saw your profile come through, I was very excited to be here. So when I was running late, I was like, get there. Anyway, um, my question to you is regarding that objectivity and managing those conflicts of interest, because I have to do that every day too. Um, this specifically. So do you create a moat between yourself and the people writing reviews? Do they know who's paying you? Is it a big enough team that like, you know, okay, write a review about this, but we're not going to say that we're getting affiliate, you know, paid for this? Or is it, everyone kind of knows, but you're you're creating a culture of maintaining company. Yeah, so we said, in the past couple years, we've completely divorced the editorial side from the revenue side. Okay. Because, you know, we're both a blog and a business. We want to create the best content as a business want to. Sure. Money, right? So we used to really marry those two. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that would usually end up with the business, the revenue generation, mm -hmm. uh, make over the content. Yeah. But I said, you know what? If I'm not going to give uh, my editor or the writers, my most affiliate links anymore, so they're not going to know um, what's, uh, you know, what's monetized and what's not. So yeah, we've, we've, we've worked to, to yeah. that yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, just want to make sure. Because that, that was an interesting way of So it's very clear to me that there is a, a glaring flaw in your business model. Now, I know a way that you can literally double or triple your revenue if you answer this single question. What is your favorite pizza? <laughs> Um, 
I'm curious. Money done right. The, the the name. How did you guys come up with that? Oh yeah. So it was originally actually called MillennialMoneyClub.com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is much better. Yeah. And, um, another financial blogger. He had the site called MillennialMoney.com. We're actually friends. Uh, I saw him at a conference a few weeks ago. Kind of looks like me too. <laughs> but um, way more successful than me. <laughs> but he approached me as I had was starting to build my blog.com website. He said, hey, you know, they kind of noticed it. And we went back and forth to our Facebook messages. Yeah, I got the one at and I got the trademark on it with respect to this class of blogging. And so I talked to some lawyers about it. They said, yeah, push comes to shove, you probably win. So I had to change my site at that point to something else. And so I basically, um, you know, to name sheet where I buy domain names. We were talking about a bunch of money or related stuff. And I, I, I narrowed down the three three kind of categories to rebrand my site. So one was like money do, kind of a play on honey do. Another one was like money be, like a play on honey be. And there was money done right. I don't know how I came with them. They were all the cheapest domains. You had to pay a thousand dollars for them, right? Or it was like the 99 cent names you did. So um, I was in some Facebook group at the time, I think, for other bloggers. And I said, hey, which do you like the best? So I don't know, seems to be the most communicated, the best, even though it's maybe not as brandy as like a money new or a money bee or something like that. So you know what, I just want to be straightforward and make it fairly clear about what the website content is going to be about. So it's kind of, it's rough because it's three words, and usually they say with like a website or a brand name, you want to kind of keep it shorter. But oh, you don't want five like I have. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, with the website, especially. Yeah. Yeah. But thinking about that time. Hey, I'm Ben. Thanks again for presenting. Very clear and cohesive. Love it. Um, I have two questions for you. Uh, number one. What, um, what does it look like, especially in your first couple months, um, in creating an affiliate deal? How do you how do you get that process going? Is it like a cold call? Is it an email, et cetera? Basically, Google, you know, such and such robo-advisor affiliate program. And you'll, you'll find it. And then you just apply to it. Um, so eventually, when you have enough volume, you can have enough scale to send these companies. But at first, you probably have to go through like an affiliate network. Like if you're only sending like a few leads a month or a few accounts a month or whatever, um, so the affiliate networks kind of pull a bunch of smaller publishers together and then they you know, give the leads to the, to the ultimate brand. But they take a cut, obviously. So um, yeah, it's just about Googling it and then applying. Sometimes, and most of the time, if you have a decent body of content, you have decent traffic, they'll say, hey, this, is, this looks good. We want to partner with you. Uh, if, you're brand, if you're brand new, um, you know, Probably get a little bit of content on your site first and some traffic before some of those. Cool. And second question um, How do you find, recruit, manage uh, people for your team? And are they just writing, you know, from just uh, freehand, so to speak, or are they using any services like ClearScope or what have you to, to optimize for SEO? Yeah. Um, so the, the best way that I've found to find the editorial people anyway, the editor and writers, is to look at sites that have recently, in my same niche, that have recently been bought. Because these blogs get bought all the time. Not all the time, but fairly frequently. And of course, when you know, Lending Tree bought uh, Student Loan Hero, let's say, they usually lay off the writing staff of the, the target company. But, you know, because I know they created good content, they created good enough content to rank and to, um, you know, generate really large revenue, then hey, they're probably decent writers, so I'll look at their stuff. And so that's how I found uh, my best hires for on the editorial side, just those people who laid off after acquisition. Um, for the, the other more administrative functions, I just look on LinkedIn or post a job post or something, but that kind of core team, I, I find a lot of that. Um, What's your second question? Do you use like a clear scope or any other kind of service for people to optimize their stuff from a keyword uh, perspective, okay. or do they just 
post it and good to go. No, so my um, my editor and I we have a weekly meeting and we use tools like SEO tools like Ahrefs and Moz and Surfer SEO. So yeah, we use several kind of tools to, to get the keywords right. Um, what we're finding though that Google's becoming less and less keyword dependent as, as Google becomes better at distinguishing good content from bad content and what people mean, what synonyms are for certain searches. So we're still very heavily in the keywords and we do use tools for that. But um, we don't necessarily worry as much about that as we used to. But we still want to get you know keywords in there naturally and not force it. Thank you. content calendar 
which is basically our content plan for the next few months. And it, there is some seasonality to it. Right now, we produce a lot of tax content. Right. How many the ideas for it? We look at other articles, right? What other people, we might look at questions that are very popular on Reddit to kind of see like what other people ask in there or other networks. We use this tool called Answer the, Answer the Public, I think, um, where, where you can type in like taxes. You can see like people are searching right now for or like keyword tools, you know, it'll show you how many searches per month on this particular if you type in taxes, you know, people might be typing what are, what are capital gains taxes or something like that, right? We can create a piece of content around that. So um, yeah, there's a seasonality too, but there's evergreen content too that's not so seasonal. Uh, you know, seven ways to budget or something like that. Right. You know, that's kind of just that general purpose stuff. Um, but we do use keywords to, to kind of figure out the content, but we don't necessarily stuff our content with those keywords, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so Megan, sorry. The vision was brought on by a comment that you made about Google could either start hating it and it dies, yeah. or you could sell it. And that brought us to a question we hear a lot and we talk about a lot. I look at Kyle because he was one of the first people that really started asking it, starting with the end in mind. Yeah. What do you feel like you're doing in, on a daily basis to prepare your business for whatever that eventuality is that you desire? Right. So are you just riding until the wheels fall off and that's really the approach? Or are you gearing it up to be something that is attractive yeah. for potential buyout? I mean, the main thing with, with a buyout is they're looking, obviously, for revenue and actual efficiency <coughs> as well. So, you know, we just have to be those numbers and seeing Okay, how can we all these drive revenue without driving up costs too much? Um, another thing, and this is why I focus on SEO, because in the particular publisher space, it's SEO that's rewarded more than uh, paid traffic, right? So that's how we kind of jump that gear there. But it's really just about being more, I think, a bit more clear about what I want with my team so that they act more efficiently, yeah. right? So I'm always kind of duplicating our guidelines, right? Because if, they, if, if a company buys the site, they want it to be ready to go with the new owner, right? So a lot of it's just about documenting our processes and documenting our you know, updated editorial guidelines and things like that. So a lot of it is actually spent documenting those things, both for my team and also just be able to hand it off some day. That's, that's a maybe or that's a, like you're actually hearing yourself? It's, it's a maybe. It'd be a long way. I think there's still some some So we've been talking about your team a lot, making reference to your team. Tell us a little bit about who's a part of that. Are they actual employees or the yeah. contract or how's that right. for you? So there's a mix of full-time employees and contractors. The writers are all contractors. I found that the best freelance writers are typically going to work on a contract basis. They don't want to be employed. Because they can make a lot more money. Contract. I mean, there's this, this law that recently passed, AB5. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, that's kind of made it tough for them. I get fights with the uh, uh, but but um, who wrote that bill. But, you know, so that's, that's making it tough for the California. So, all my writers are outside of California now. You know, they're all freelancers. Uh, so, you know, they view themselves as small business owners, right? And so, you know, they can make a few hundred grand a year you know, writing. Why do they want to be a staff writer for 80 grand a year? You know what I mean? So, um, you know, so those are right. the, the more administrative people, like an outreach person, PR, kind of thing, media, stuff like that, those are employees. Um, you know, they're more kind of just, they have a steel stick, they're not allowed, they don't want to treat someone. So, you know, the employer versus contract, well, it depends, I mean, you know, how we treat them. There's rules in place, right? I don't make a decision all the time. But, um, yeah, so there's, there's an editor, there's the freelance writers, there's the outreach person, and the social media people, they're all contractors. Yeah. So, because um, I don't, we don't do a whole lot of social media anymore. So, um, yeah, there's three full time employees, which is me, the outreach person, and the editor, and then both the other, the other team on the ground. business has its ups and downs. Right. What was the lowest point in this business journey for you? And did you ever think, I think I have to shut this down? Yeah, I am. Okay, How okay. did you <laughs> overcome that? <laughs> um, so the lowest point is probably when I had a rebrand and everything. 
Sweet. 